Hello everyone, welcome back to our discussion of low visibility. We're going to talk about the theory behind what causes low visibility. And that brings us to a little bit of physics talking about electromagnetic radiation. And specifically we're looking at um, visible light. And visible light um, wavelengths are between 0.5 and 0.7 or 8 microns in wavelength. And you can see visible light uh, because your eyes are accustomed to it. Your eyes are sensitive to that particular wavelength. So if you're looking at an object that's radiating uh, emissions, electromagnetic radiation, in those wavelengths, you can see it. Of course, uh, objects such as light bulbs or the sun are emitting that radiation, and you can see those. The other reason you can see things is if that electromagnetic radiation is reflected off of objects. So just like reading a book, if you're reading a book, um, the black ink is, absorbs the electromagnetic radiation, the visible light, whereas the white page will reflect it. So the contrast between the two allow you to be able to read the print. So the light radiation coming off of objects, reflecting off of objects, allow you to see them. If there is something in between the object that you're trying to see and your eyes, then that will restrict the light. That's pretty obvious. So things like fog particles, raindrops, snowflakes um, will scatter the light, will not allow you to see the object. So scattering happens whenever light waves are incident or strike any objects in the atmosphere, whether they be um, molecules of air, um, water droplets, snowflakes, dust particles. And there are three things that can happen to scattered light. You can have backscattering, which we call reflecting. And this is similar to when you turn on your high beams in the car and more light comes back to your eyes. It's just the reflection of the light, but if you increase the intensity, the intensity coming back will be greater. You can also have forward scattering, where the light strikes these particles, but then continues on, but in different directions. They say that this is the reason why the sky is blue, because of air molecules scattering the light. And then finally, you can have transmission, where some of the light actually makes it through. So the number or the amount of scattering that's done by particles in the atmosphere depends upon the size of the particle and also the number of particles. And it makes sense that the more aerosols in the atmosphere, the more fog droplets, the more uh, dust particles in the atmosphere, the more scattering that you'll have. So it's directly proportional. But the size does matter. And there is a uh, theory behind scattering in the atmosphere Part of that theory is called Rayleigh scattering, which says that objects that are 10 times the size of the wavelength tend to scatter the most. So what that means is fog particles are typically about 10 microns in size, and uh, visible wavelengths that our eyes are tuned to is probably or about uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 microns. So you can see that fog droplets in the atmosphere are just about the right size for Rayleigh scattering. They're about 10 times the size of the wavelength of light. So fog particles scatter light the best. So what that says is that if you have a lot of particles in the atmosphere, a lot of droplets that are 10 times the size of the wavelength, about maybe 7 to 10 microns, then it will scatter light really well. Whereas objects that are really large, and maybe only a few of them, like precipitation, raindrops or big snowflakes, won't scatter the light as much and you'll have better visibility. So that brings us to fog. We're going to discuss fog and how fog forms. By definition, this is straight out of Federal Meteorological Handbook Number 1. Um, fog is a visible aggregate of water, minute water particles or droplets which are based at the Earth's surface and they reduce horizontal visibility to less than five-eighths of a statute mile. 
and they don't fall to the ground according to the strict definition. The key thing I want you to remember there is less than 5 eighths. If it's 5 eighths of a mile or more visibility, then it'll be mist. Less than that, it's fog. And the ASOS machine will determine when there's fog and will report fog, FG, in a report when it sees visibilities less than 5 eighths of a mile and when the two temperature dew point spread is 4 degrees Fahrenheit or less. If it's greater than 4 degrees Fahrenheit, then it assumes it's not close to saturation and it'll report something else. Fog forms uh, on con cloud condensation nuclei, CCI, uh, CCN, which are hygroscopic aerosols in the atmosphere. Hygroscopic means that they attract uh, water vapor molecules. And when the temperature approaches the dew point, the air becomes uh, with uh, the air has a higher relative humidity, it starts to approach saturation. And as that occurs, uh, water molecules will attach themselves to cloud condensation nuclei if they are hygroscopic. Now this occurs at relative humidities that are less than 100%. And meteorologists call this, or atmospheric scientists call this deliquescence, meaning that water molecules will start to form a solution they won't necessarily grow to sizes that scatter light you know, efficiently, but they'll start growing. So you might have these particles, little water particles, that are just really just, just uh, starting to grow on the order of about a micron or two in size at relative humidities less than 100%. We're talking anywhere greater than 85 percent, typically about 90 to 95 percent relative humidities. So now we're going to talk about the ways that fog forms and after that we're going to go into the different types of fog. Fogs form by one of two methods. Either you can cool the air to saturation where the temperature comes down to meet the dew point or you can add moisture to the atmosphere. In that case the dew point goes up to reach the temperature. Next, we'll talk about the different types of fog.